Salutations viewers, my name is Game Dame and welcome back to one of Game Dame Reacts where we have a, yet another trailer on Black Myth Wukong and that is the hands-on uh, gameplay footage. Thankfully it is not two hours but uh, it looks like they're going to give us little snippets of the first two hours in these five minutes. So let's go ahead and watch the trailer for Black Myth Wukong. The list of impressive looking Souls like games on the horizon is long, with games like Phantom Blade Zero, Foot yes. Rock, Siege of Dawn, and Wu Chong Fallen Feathers all having solid showings this summer event season. But there's always been something extra special about Black Myth Wukong. I mean, it's, it's about Sun Wukong. Gorgeous. The animations to are be incredibly honest. fluid, it's steeped in rich Chinese culture, and there's just something immensely satisfying about playing as a Monkey King, beating up all sorts of mythical creatures with a giant extendable staff. While this is because the first it's time badass hands on with the game, it is my own personal first time with it. And after two hours of playtime with the opening chapter, I somehow walked away even more excited for its August 20th release, which is so fucking close. Oh, my gosh. IGN China has already done an extensive preview on what Wukong plays like on a late game build with many techniques, stances, and transformations already unlocked, which is great because my two hours covered pretty much the very start of the game. The first thing that I noticed as I started playing was how fluid and fast Wukong feels to control. Many souls I mean, it does on look a like of slower and more methodical combat, but Wukong feels exceptionally quick and agile. From Which is a lot like Sekudo or uh, Bloodborne. Wukong can twirl a staff to block projectiles. No block button. But as far as melee attacks go, everything must be dodged. To that end, there's a Bayonetta-style dodge system where you can dodge up to three times very quickly, but after the third one, you're punished with a lengthy recovery time to try and curb people from just mindlessly mashing the dodge button. Oh, I see. You with extra focus. And once well, I'm used to filled, not using like the actual dodge dodge. I'm used to using like the regular for big move out of the way. Damage. Later on, those focus points can also be spent on different types of special moves that you unlock in the skill tree, which we'll get to a bit later. Wukong also has access to a number of spells that consume his mana. I only really got to play around with the immobilize spell, which, as you can imagine, stops an enemy in their tracks which and allows is so you to sneak cool. in a few hits before the spell's effect wears off. Stronger enemies or do like a massive are fucking by hit the spell much less and sometimes they were able to shrug it off entirely Even at just an early stage combat was a fun dance of actively looking for opportunities to avoid enemy attacks and find openings Keeping an eye Why on block when you can just dodge heavy attack whenever I had the chance while also managing like see those regular dodges I can do spell. Eventually I got my first transformation which turns Wukong into an absolute beast with much stronger attacks and a hugely damaging super attack that he can use out of a dodge if he manages to build up a focus point. One yeah, of fuck him up, Wukong. is a lightning fast dash attack that made me feel like I had basically turned into the boss that I got the transformation from. Later on, I added another tool to my repertoire, the Tower Stance, which swapped out my chargeable overhead strong attack for the ability to stand on my staff and avoid damage on the ground as long as my stamina held out. If I manage to stay that might be one of the most key charge, things to get in the beginning to too if you don't want to get hit around too hard down with the powerful strike that felt which I know cool I'm probably gonna have to get these dances along with my general combat abilities could all be upgraded through a level up system that works a lot like Sekiro's as you defeat enemies you'll gain will which builds up a bar in the top right of the screen when the bar is full you gain a spark which can be used to purchase upgrades from one of your various skill trees once you fill the bar and bank a point you can't lose it you can even add that point wherever you want, not just at a shrine, which serves as Wukong's version of a bonfire-like checkpoint. However, if you die before you manage to fill the bar, a portion of that experience will be lost in typical Souls-like fashion. Don't let that trick of you into course, thinking that Of course, typical Souls-like fashion. Game, because it certainly is not. Enemies are aggressive, bosses are relentless, and even more so in their second phases, and you only have a scant few restorative potions to keep yourself alive. I also managed to find a secret boss room behind a waterfall that took me to a dragon boss that absolutely wrecked me. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to do a secret boss. <laughs> so you can come back to him much later down oh, the road. perfect. That's cool that you can come back to it via the shrines. shrines. And speaking of gear, I didn't manage to find all that much, but I did find enough to at least know that there are sets of armor that grant extra bonuses for wearing multiple pieces of gear from that set. The levels themselves were fairly linear with a couple of branching points that led to some sort of treasure or item pickup. The real star of the show, though, were the boss battles. 
even in just I mean, two obviously, hours, the boss battles wide variety of is what they've been showing us, and we know that it looks good as shit. From, to a mule kicking frog in human clothes, <laughs> to an Not a frog. Two phase battle against a snake man. All in all, I greatly enjoyed my time with Black Myth Wukong. Even oh, he didn't get any footage of, of the snake man, which I is feel fine. Like I got to experience a lot of combat progression, and am excited to see how things will continue to evolve as the game goes on. We won't have to wait much longer to see how the full game shakes out as Black Myth Wukong releases on PC and PlayStation 5 on August 20th. Hell yeah. So it's PC and PS5 on August 20th. I am so fucking excited for Black Myth Wukong. I wish I could get my hands on it so I could play the first two hours, but I mean, that's just going to make me want to play more of it personally. So by the time I play it, I will have be in um, the... DLC for Elden Ring, so I'll already be in a uh, like Dark Souls like mindset, which is gonna be fucking awesome. I'm seriously so excited seeing some of the boss battles that they have here. I was pretty shocked to hear that there is no blocking, um, but I am that I am a dodger naturally, so it doesn't bother me too much. I know some games like parrying is key, which I absolutely hated because sometimes my parrying is not great. Other times, like my parrying is never consistent. Like sometimes I'm really fucking good. Other times I miss every single one. But I do like how uh, this is kind of set up because I do just dodge a lot as like a player in general. But hey, like I'm very much looking forward to Black Myth Wukong. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are also excited to play Black Myth Wukong. But that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate your time as always. But please do not forget to subscribe and or follow not only to my YouTube, but to my Twitch. You guys are where my YouTube is at. But you can find my Twitch at twitch.tv slash thegamedame. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.